ko message once you're done with this the pancreatic inflammation and the peripancreatic inflammation is divided into two parts and that is what we call the morphological staging and you have what you have is in the first week you have a progression either to an edematous pancreatitis or a necrotizing pancreatitis again beyond 7 days this could be interchangeable the important thing to remember is the pancreatitis is not an isolated process it can involve the pancreas or the peripancreatic or the subjacent structures the pancreatic necrosis can be either in less than 3% of cases only related only within the pancreas less than 3% of the cases a bulk of the cases will have a peripancreatic component pancreatic necrosis versus peripancreatic necrosis the peripancreatic necrosis has a much better prognosis to improve the pancreatic necrosis does not have such a great necrosis you are losing viable pancreatic tissue which cannot come back whereas peripancreatic necrosis is basically inflammation of the fat which has a far better chance of improvement so from a clinical standpoint of view if i see very minuscule amount of pancreatic necrosis and fluid and i see lot of peripancreatic necrosis i'm still sure that this patient is going to do better than a patient who's got tremendous amount of pancreatic necrosis in alone in isolation so that's a clinical take home point out here again they may or may not get infected or they may remain sterile throughout their entire life uh, the lifespan of the